Well, welcome everybody to another Faith in Marriage today. My name is Dr. Mario Sacasa, your host, and joining me as always is... Jason Angelette. It's Jason. good to be with you guys. <laughs> good, good, man. So here we are. We're, we're, we're kind of getting to the end of this first um, step, I guess, in the battle against coronavirus, and now entering into phase one, uh, where we are beginning to ease up back on some of the social distancing, social uh, you know, standards there to, to keep people apart. And so we're, you know, we're going we're gonna to have a great conversation talking about this and how this applies specifically to us as Catholic faithful here in the New Orleans area. And so joining us on the call today is uh, Father Andrew Rudman, parochial vicar at St. Clement of Rome. So Father Andrew, welcome. How are you doing, man? Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Sakasa, Jason. Uh, doing great. I'm so excited for phase one. Finally, we've been praying for this and we've been hoping for this and it's actually going to be coming true this weekend. So uh, we're looking forward to it here at St. Clement of Rome, bringing a lot of more people back to church, um, always keeping them with the guidelines, but still, it's been so nice to see. I tell everyone at Mass, I'm like, it's so nice to see your eyes, you know? I miss them so much. <laughs> I could have taken so, pictures of my eyes and texted it to you if that's all it was. No, 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 it's not the same. It's not the same, you know? So uh, so I'm really, uh, I can't wait to see, you know, about uh, close to like, you know, 175 more sets of eyes this weekend. So that'll be good. Fantastic. I guess uh, Father Luis, you get sick of staring at him after a while. Is that is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, you know, it's just uh, the only person to come in contact with for two months. You all know, understand what that's like, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah I so. Get it. I get it. No, it's yeah. good. All right, well, so Father Andrew, I guess first question, you know, as we kind of get into this, um, what's going on at St. Clement? What are, what are the standards? What practically is it going to look like? And uh, the I'm assuming that whatever's being put, put forth at our parish will be similar across the whole archdiocese. Um, so just kind of give us a little bit of a rundown. What What's going on? What are the restrictions going to look like? What does phase one look like over the next few weeks? W what, what are we doing? Okay. So uh, we're really excited uh, that we're not in Orleans Parish, but hey, that's okay. So for Orleans Parish, I was just, uh, the Archbishop confirmed this with all of us. He's been, first of all, Archbishop Amen has been amazing. Like he has been in direct contact with the governor, with Mayor Cantrell, like he's been really, really uh, in touch. And he has been, I can't tell you the number of personal emails he sent to the priests to make sure that we're in touch and that we're being obedient. Um, but at the same time that we are offering the faithful everything that we possibly can. Um, so I really, his leadership has been incredible in this time. Um, but for us, so Orleans Parish has the 25% capacity or 100 people, whichever is smaller. But for the other parishes, um, for our parish, here in, in Metairie, we are able to have 25% capacity, which for St. Clement of Rome is 175 uh, people. So for every mass, we're able to have 175 people in the church, Fantastic. which we're super excited about. Um, now, the guidelines always say you gotta have masks. We're gonna have masks, but you know, every, the whole time you're in church, you're gonna be wearing the mask. Um, also social distancing at all times. And so the question is, all right, so how do we fit 175 people in the church and maintain the social distance? Well, this is gonna be trial and error. And uh, the trial right now is a rope system that we have done. Okay. Uh, so if you go in St. Clement of Rome Church right now, it looks kind of like um, a maze because we have, we're trying to do stagger seating. We think that'll maximize you know, the, the amount of people that we can get in the pews while keeping that social distance, which and, you, know, you can't just do every other pew. It's like four and a half feet. So it's not quite six feet. So we had to be creative. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're doing. We're roping these these stagger pews. We're being innovative with the communion lines so that everyone can get back to the place where they enter the pew, and uh, and we'll see how it works. And we the good news we have Saturday two vigil mass, the guinea pigs four and five thirty p.m. And so if it's a disaster, we'll adjust. <laughs> so uh, that's just, that's just where we're at. I love the uh, the desire to just to, to try to reach out to everybody right now and to and to offer this and to fight for this. I know it's not easy. Uh, it, it's almost the temptation to be like, well, let's just wait till it's all uh, ready and and then and then we'll go to this full opening. But we need to start taking steps. We need to find one. I mean, this is this is so important. Our faith is is an essential business. You know, it's it's an essential business to our, to our lives. And the celebration of the mass is is the source some of the Christian life is the Eucharist. And so this is a, a great opportunity 
to start that that um, invitation, to start that opportunity back up again, right? But I guess my question is, is that, so how do you get to be in that number? How do you get to be in the 25%? And, uh, and what if you're a person who's kind of like on the fence where you're thinking, I'd hate to go to mass and then take someone else's place because I wanted to go to mass. And how, how would you respond to that, Father? That's a good question, Jason. And that's, that's really important. So we, uh, we thank God for the gifts of technology. I mean, I don't know what they did in 1918 during the <laughs> Spanish flu, uh, right. where they had none of this. Um, but we have this really awesome uh, capacity to make online forms. And so, um, for I mean, it, if, if someone does not have the internet or whatever, we they can call the office, we will sign them up. Um, but these forms, it's it's amazing because I'm able to set up the form where you, you literally just, you put in every person in your family that'll be attending mass, and every person counts and the form, the system actually counts for itself. And so I can set it a limit to 175 registrants, they call it. And as soon as they, they fill up that, that space, it says we've, we've maxed out on the registrants and so they can select another mass. Another thing that we've done to try to make sure that as many people as possible can come to mass is we've increased our masses. And so we're, like I said you know earlier, we have two vigil masses now and we'll have six masses on Sunday, so eight masses. So we're looking at about 1,400 people who want to attend mass can attend mass, and and actually, you know, we're really optimistic because I think at St. Clement on a on a normal non-pandemic weekend we probably get about 2,000 people that come through 1,800 to 2,000. So we're not that far off the mark uh, for for our offering for the weekend, and uh, and we also consider you know that there are there are definitely people um, who are in that certain age bracket or. Who are you know uh, immunocompromised or have certain you know co- comorbidities or whatever uh, that aren't are still not going to be comfortable coming to mass, which is absolutely okay. And once again, Archbishop Amen, he's dispensed from that obligation for the the remainder of the pandemic. So so no one um, should feel like they they have to go, uh, you know. Um, but those who want to go, we should be able to accommodate them in some way. Um, and so the, to your question, Jason, you know, it's like okay, what you know what what should I do? You know, it, I think leave it up to your pastor, leave it up to your parish, because we are blessed to be able to offer a 25% capacity of 175 people, but other churches, other parishes may not be able to offer that same um, that same number. However, I know some parishes are doing mass in two different locations, like they're doing a mass in the gym and a mass in, and if you go to the gym, I mean, that's a much bigger space. And so right. so that's why it, it's it's been so amazing in this time because there's, there really isn't much for us to go on that we really need to trust the Holy Spirit, trust the guidance of our leaders, and trust our pastors and our parish leadership to do what, what we need to do for our parish family. And the parish next, next door could be doing something totally different, and that's okay. You know? So, um, so I'm, I'm hopeful, Jason, that at this point, everyone that wants to go to Mass should be able to go to Mass. And, and we'll find I, I would actually be surprised if we even fill up all those Masses just because People are still um, are being cautious, which is totally okay, you know. So, so two quick questions for you. The first one's real quick. Then you, you said that Archbishop Amen has lifted the, the the requirement for mass. So is that even though masses are happening, are we still obligated to go to mass and have to find a way, or if it's only where we fit a certain population that that the dispensation is has been offered? So Archbishop Amen has has dispensed from the obligation okay so no no catholic in the archdiocese of new orleans has an obligation uh to attend mass on sundays and holy days um so so we're good there and that and 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 that's you don't need you don't really don't need a reason Mm -hmm. you know um and he's done that because there are many reasons why um especially finally this is the first weekend in like over two months that we can actually see some numbers in church so I mean, and he's going to continue to 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 see what he needs to do uh, for the salvation of souls. That's his job. It's like, what can we do to make it uh, possible for the salvation of souls? And right now, it's it would be too arduous and even on maybe sometimes dangerous for certain people to attend mass, to be in a group of people, and uh, and that's that's based on the on the person. So that's good. Okay, great. So another quick question for you, Father Andrew. So okay, so at our house, uh, we say grace uh, around the table, and we do like to hold hands while we say grace. Um, but during quarantine, we've we've jokingly 
put our elbows out. And so this has been the way, if people can see how we've done grace <laughs> around the table. And we always get a smirk. Kristen always laughs at me, you know, when I, when I initiate this. It's like, all right, no, no, holding, no, no hand holding, guys, at all. And uh, so I, I'm assuming then that this rests the bait of whether or not we should hold hands during the Our Father as we're moving forward. Is, is that... Is that like? I mean, I mean, wait, sorry, I, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to do that. Is that uh, yes, yes. Is that, is that effectively end that conversation? I'm a, I'm a handholder. I'm not gonna lie. I grew up in the '80s. What do you want me to say? I grew up, I, I grew up. That's what I grew up with. And so, in my family, we hold hands. So, so we're gonna be elbow uh, as a, as a family come Sunday. Um, so I joke about that, obviously, but, <laughs> okay. but at the same time, I guess sincerely though, like what, like we talk about the snake and, and the, the ropes, but what other measures will be put into place or social custom customs that we've, that we've become accustomed to the sign of peace. Obviously we're not going to be doing that. I'm assuming we'll just be receiving on the hand, um, and not in the mouth, uh, just the, 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 the bread and, and, and the, and the, not the wine, I mean, just the precious body and not the precious blood. So I'm assuming those type of things will, will be in place as well as safeguards. Um, what 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 do you think about it, about all this? What, what 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 yeah? What do we got there? Well, uh, everything you said. You know, um, we we're in the language of the Archbishop. Um, we really are encouraging the reception of the Holy Communion on the hand, um, and and no touching. You know, uh, for for any of those things. Families, you know, families do what families got to do, and that's like. That's great. And that's why, like, I mean, you can sit next to each other in mass. You're not social distancing from these people. And so you get to stay as a family unit. Um, and, and, you know, something that's really interesting with the sign of peace. So in I had the, the, the privilege, the blessing to go to India uh, a few summers ago with, with one of my best friends. And we went to Calcutta and we got to, you know, see Mother Teresa, visit her, her tomb and, and work with the Sister of Charity. It was amazing. And, uh, and at, at mass during the sign of peace in India, everywhere we went, they put their hands together and they would bow to the person. There's no physical contact. And I thought it was amazing. I was just like, first of all, it's so reverent and so peaceful. So like you're about to receive our Lord and Holy Communion. And and we have this like moment where we truly are acknowledging our brothers and sisters. We're about to be entered into communion with them, which is awesome. And it makes the long distance peace so possible and so reverent. I could see someone at the other end of the church and I could bow to them. It's totally cool. It's totally cool. There's none of, none of this. I fly deuces. Of, I, I fly deuces. It, it was, peace. Did, didn't have, peace. yeah, but I, I didn't have to do any of that. I was just like, he gets it, you know? You can do that. Bow. Exactly. It's like, it actually, it feels exactly like when you make a connection with the, with the guy on the float. Like you're like, throw me something, mister. He sees you, you catch it. And you're like, <laughs> Guy, yeah, right? you're right. <laughs> like, so that's awesome. I think, I think that the whole world has an opportunity to experience this. All right. And the 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 best part is, then you're about to receive our Lord, and it's like I've never yeah. lost that like sense of peace and like contemplation about like what's about to happen. So awesome. Yeah. Well, that sounds like your homily this weekend. You know. I mean, I, I look maybe. forward to hearing that. That's a good. That's a good one. That's a good one. I gotta write that down. Yeah. <laughs> But I think, well, you know, you, with, oh. No, I, just a, a follow-up question to uh, the Archdiocese of New Orleans. Have you heard of anywhere else where the dispensation has been lifted in the United States? Is there air right now that's that's holding on to the requirement to attend Mass? Or since uh, with this new phase coming up on May 15th or any other days in the future? So I'm not 100% aware, but I... I imagine that most dioceses, if not all dioceses, are doing this right now because um, it's interesting too. Like, I only know of a few other places. My family lives in Cleveland, Ohio, and so uh, they actually aren't talking about anything until like May 28th, the earliest. Like, wow. and that's just that's not just churches, but that's anywhere. And so uh, we're actually moving a lot faster than than some of our you know neighboring dioceses, neighboring areas. Um, I, yeah, so the answer, the real answer, I don't know if there are some dioceses that, that have have allowed. I mean, I, I don't know what's I don't know what things are like in like, you know, uh, the Dakotas, you know, or right. like you know some of the more you know remote areas where maybe they didn't have as much of an interruption. But yeah, so I don't know. I'd imagine that most dioceses right now are still dispensing from the obligation. Okay. So yeah. another question, a comment that we just received on the Facebook Live, Lindsay, thanks for for offering this to us. She says, I, I wish I could attend, but I have asthma. So that, that makes me think about 
we said earlier, obviously the dispensation's been lifted, and so anybody for whatever reason that they have to feed, that they feel that they can't make it to mass. But will we see, I guess, like an increase in extraordinary ministers going to people's yes. homes? Um, is there a way to be able to meet faithful Catholics like like this who who uh, would love to be able to go to the mass? Maybe they're watching it on TV and they know they don't they got the dispensation, but but will parishes be more attentive to to having more ministers actually going to the homes, or does that pose a risk that that you know is, is too much? What do you think? Thank you, Lindsay, for that question. That's that's a really good question, and the and the question of communion has really been a big one this whole time, right? Um, so recently, Cardinal Sarah, Cardinal Robert Sarah, he made a, a really awesome statement. He is the okay. Uh, <clears throat> the prefect for the congregation of divine worship and the discipline of the sacraments. Big, big name. Basically, big he's in charge. Big yeah, timer. big title. Just try saying that three times so, fast, Father Andrew. Right. <laughs> I, I can't. I can't. I barely said it once. Um, <laughs> so he basically is in charge of governing the liturgy of the church to make sure that the liturgy and the sacraments, and I mean, and it's his, it's his role to like, to, to make sure that we are handling the blessed sacrament, our Lord, uh, appropriately, you know, as, as the church has taught us. And so, he made a statement about communion, and it was a twofold statement. And the first was, he's like, the Jesus is a person. And so the way that we handle the Eucharist, we need to handle it as we would handle a person because he is a person. And so he shouldn't be given in bags. He shouldn't be yes. like, this is all, this, you would never do that with a person. And he said, right. he is a person, and we treat him like a person. The second thing he said was very interesting, and he was speaking in particular to about priests. And he said, no one has the right to stop a priest from administering the sacraments to the people that requ they're requesting them, and in particular with communion. So he said, no one can stop the priest from giving communion to someone who asks. And so yeah. I can't speak to extraordinary ministers, but I can speak about priests. Yeah. And if a parishioner asks for Holy Communion, the priest is, is, is obligated, I mean, within reason, right, is obligated sure. to, to try to make that possible for that person. And so, Lindsay, for you, like, I would talk to your priests and say, I, I, I desire to receive our Lord and Holy Communion. Is there a way that this can be possible for me? Um, and, and and allow him to, to shepherd you in that. That's beautiful. Jason, you got any other questions here for Father Andrew? Well, you know, I just, I, I think that's just so beautiful. The the fact that like, you know, this is causing a deeper intimacy, you know, when, when, when suffering and happens, it, it hurts and it can it can cause a lot of harm and and division. But at the same time, I think that because our Lord is with us, it can cause a deeper unity. Um, and I and I feel like there's this deeper longing that that is happening. And I and I pray uh, for that that Holy Spirit is just to come down and fan that flame of faith in all of us. That I mean, before the pandemic, it was as if so many of us we're already living as if there was a dispensation in the sacraments that we didn't have to go to church on Sundays. And, uh, and, and so, but right now we're at a spot right now where I, I'm just praying that more people will, will come back to the faith, um, uh, through the, through maybe this, this wake up time, uh, this time where we're not sure what the next day is going to exactly look like. Um, that a lot of times I, I feel like in life we can put ourselves in a place where we try to rule the day and manage it ourselves and try to figure things out on our own. And, um, and I, and I feel like we lose out on an opportunity to allow Christ into our life and into our, our relationships and into to our struggles, um, and I don't know. I just I see this uh, big picture where we can go deeper in our faith, um, and uh, and I'm hoping that there's a more a deeper longing to want to receive our Lord, and for those who are struggling in health, that they make that request uh, to seek the Lord and to see how He can come to them, um, and through the the, the sacraments uh, especially, and to not feel like they're completely abandoned. That there are ways. That it that you can receive. There are ways that that you can encounter our Lord in these sacraments. Um, Father, what are your thoughts on that? I think that's you're you're right on, Jason. You know, and that's been um, just it, it. Really, is a beautiful time of purification for us. And something that I I was reflecting on uh, this weekend with Mother's Day uh, was Holy Mother Church, mm -hmm. and my uh, my my heartfelt desire for people. Um, and, and going with what you're saying, you know, Jason, like, is that when we come back, that we come back with our whole heart, you know, like, like we hear in the beginning of Lent, like, come back to me with all your heart. 
And that if yes. there are places in our lives, places in our marriage, places in our family that we've been holding back from the Lord, holding back from Mother Church, or maybe disagreeing, right? That we can not just come back to church, not just come back to communion, but we can say, Lord, I want to give you my whole heart, like in this complete yeah. reconsecration, recommitment of, of the family um, um, to the Lord. You know, this is, and, and I, I just think that that's, that's such, a, this is a fresh start, you know? So we have yes. every family now has an opportunity to say like, whether we were like faithful going to Sunday, going to mass every Sunday, or we were like, man, you know, it's been a long time. And you know, there are some families uh, and it breaks my heart, you know, to, to, to understand, to know this, to, to have heard this, you know, there are some families that would love to go to church, but they feel like they don't belong or they feel mm-hmm. like, man, it's been so long. Uh, if I came in there, it's like this group of people that is going to look at me and stare at me and be like, well, they never go to church. What are they doing here now? Right. It's like, no. And this is this time where it's like fresh start. No That's one's right. been to church. And so like everyone's coming back. And so please come back and come back with your whole heart, you know, give that, give your whole family back to the Lord. Cause that's who we're made to be. And I just, that's where my heart goes out. Cause it's like, I know these families are, are suffering because they're, they're away from the Lord and they want to be there. They want to be there. And this is that great opportunity where it's like, Hey, fresh start for everyone. And we can all come back and be one. Amen. Amen. So a couple questions that popped up here uh, from viewers who are, who are chiming in. So one is uh, from Rhonda. It says, what about communion ministers? Are they needed? And, and I'm assuming that means maybe just in terms of practicalities of it, are we going to have multiple lines for communion or we're just going to have one or two lines where the priests and the deacons offer and try to keep it at a minimal? Um, so that's one question. I'd love to get your take on that. And another question that came through from Amy is, will high-risk masses be offered? And I guess I'm, I'm not. Amy, if you want to chime in and let us know what you mean by that, I'm not entirely sure what you mean by high-risk masses. Um, uh, but maybe with the first one, what, what about uh, lines for communion, Father Andrew? What, what's going on there? Okay. Rhonda, thank you for that question. Um, so right now, with 175 people uh, attending Mass, we are going to just have the priests and the deacons minister communion. And um, I think it's important to make this point. So other communion ministers are called extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion. Mm-hmm. And and the reason that we deputize, that's the word, like these certain lay ministers, it, it was for need, you know. But... There's an interesting point that was made with uh, there was this Pew survey that was that got that was really big. Uh, I think it was in the fall or, or maybe it was in the mm-hmm. summer, um, where they talked about 80% of Catholics of a certain age bracket, like under the age of 50 or 40. I'm going to get you those numbers wrong, but it's like 80% of Catholics don't believe in the true presence of the Eucharist. And right. and one of one of the the ideas as to why that could be was um, was the overuse of extraordinary ministers of holy communion because when you it, it's it's a need and we need to be able to administer communion effectively efficiently absolutely mm-hmm. but there's a there's a there's a sign a real sign that the priest is jesus and the priest is offering jesus is offering himself as a sacrifice and then you receive jesus from the priest or from the ordained the, the deacon because there's this there's this there's this this is where this is coming from i know where this is coming from and i can see the sign uninterrupted and then when, when the priests and the deacons and the ordained ministers become more removed from the sacrament, it becomes more of a, it seems more like a symbol than an actual sign and an actual person. And so, um, so will we, I mean, we will definitely, be, we hope that we'll have the numbers in church where we're going to need extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion. But in this time, it's, it's so awesome, the purification that can happen because we can go back to that original sign where we see the priest, we see Jesus, and we see him as as priest, sacrament, victim, and in being received in Holy Communion. So uh, it's a great opportunity, and uh, I hope that, yeah, so that, that, that would be That's my answer to Rhonda. Great. A- Amy chimed in again and said, uh, so the question is for high, high-risk high masses for parishioners with underlying health conditions that are more susceptible to becoming ill. Um, I know we got the safeguards that are in place there for the general population, but what if somebody in a situation like this that is a high risk individual, whether they have asthma or they're or the elderly, are there added precautions that 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 those people should take, or would there be even more reduced numbers for masses for individuals such as that, or um, or is it's it reminds me before well, before you answer it reminds me of a uh, target like tar- right now like I, I believe that the hours are set up where if you're kind of like at this kind of um, health 
you know situation then you can come before hours so they kind of recommend you coming into their store during a, this window and then everybody else come after that so that's a good question i don't know if, if has the archbishop talked about that where they would be maybe a mass for only those who are in this particular segment of the population to maybe avoid some others who maybe might have it but not might not know that they have it does that make sense yeah yeah and he uh, since we were able to offer mass for, for the 10 10 people um he's been recommending you know that we have we have masses for um these people in in these in these certain age brackets these certain um conditions we are going with trial and error at saint clement um and, and based on need you know so like if if we really see that our parish uh seems to have that need that there are a lot of our prisoners that aren't comfortable going to mass that 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 really you know they would go if they could have that kind of a mass we will definitely see if we could adjust, you know, uh, to accommodate them. But one thing that we we did uh, add to our mass schedule that we think will uh, will will be an answer to that in some ways is a 7 a.m. Sunday mass, which we uh, we we I will be imagine. there at 7 a.m. I can't bring my kids to 7 a.m. I, I, I there at there 7 you go. And that, that's, and that's, a, that's that's a natural to turn right there. You don't even have to make a sign for that one. And that's so so. There's that. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think that it's important for us. And, and like, uh, there are some, some, you know, parishioners, some, not parishioners, just people who they have been advised to not go for, the, for, for various reasons. And it's like, okay, you know, you follow that advice. But at the same time, there are many who are in that age bracket that have just like, they've been, they've been the ones chomping at the bit more than anyone else. You know, it's been, it's been beautiful to see that. So, um, it's important for us to act in prudence, but it's also important for us to, uh, to, to allow people the freedom. You know, if this 80 year old man who's been going to communion, you know, going to mass every day of his life uh, wants to come to mass, he knows the risk he's taking. And, and I'm like, let him go. Let, let him go right. if he wants to go, because what are we living for? You know, and it's like if that's on his heart and he wants to do that, I, that's okay. that's my personal opinion. That's not I mean, I'm not advising that or anything, but I, <laughs> right. I that's how I feel. All right. Well, Father Andrew, we, we're so grateful to, to have you with us. We're, we're running out of time here in this conversation. It's been a, a real blessing having you join us in this conversation. Um, final thoughts for me that I'll just offer real quick is really my, my, my one sincere prayer for everybody watching this is to please adhere to these guidelines, but even more so recognize that we are all as a society kind of emerging from this, this time where we've been at home for a while. And even in the times that I've gone out already the last week to the post office or the grocery store, I just kind of feel this anxiety that, that's kind of over me. And I can kind of sense that with everybody else that there's just a heightened anxiety as we're kind of re-emerging. Well, who do we trust? Where, where, where could we actually go where we don't feel so, so creeped out by the fact that this thing is kind of around us? So as we approach Mass, we want to encourage everybody to, to take it with reverence, with prayer, and, uh, and to cast your fears upon the Lord and to, to trust and to you know know that we're going to get through this even as we kind of enter into this this next phase um so jason any final thoughts you have here 10 seconds or so definitely continue to put this in your heart uh, and pray about this hopefully uh, we can all be in that number soon one day but uh if everybody if you can make it to mass this weekend uh, it was it, i got to go last weekend and it was so great to be at mass uh, to celebrate the eucharist and um and to receive him and in, in, in the sacrament so it's a and it's, it's, a, it's a great day it's a great day today that we have this opportunity that we're going to more people are going to be able to be able to receive and uh, again like father was saying if someone is is longing for the eucharist but can't make it please reach out to your parish uh priest to your pastor to find out how they can you can receive the eucharist uh, especially at this time when as mario you're talking about all this anxiety and worry cast your cares upon the lord Amen. All right. Father Andrew, thanks, man, so much for being with us. Jason, God bless you. God bless everybody. And have a great night. And uh, we'll, we'll see you on the next one. All right. Take care. Thank you all for having me. Absolutely. God bless. God bless.